Voltron Legendary Defender Season 4 hit Netflix today, and I'm going to be reviewing it, so stay tuned. Hey guys, and welcome back to Come Again TV, where all geek culture collides. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any of our content. I'm Shannon, and today we're going to be taking a look at Voltron Legendary Defender Season 4 on Netflix. What an interesting season this was, guys. Uh, it wasn't great by any means, but it wasn't horrible either. This review will contain spoilers, so if you haven't seen it yet, just hold off on this review. You'll be able to come back to it once you finish the season by clicking on the three little lines next to the YouTube logo and go down to history. You'll be able to watch the full video from there if you have to leave. With that being said, let's continue on. Keith has left the Voltron Force to become a full-time member of the Blade of Mamora. Shiro manages to convince the Black Lion to trust him once more and he once again becomes the Paladin of the Black Lion. Pidge manages to track down her brother Matt and brings him back to the Castle of Lions. There's a heartfelt reunion between Matt and Shiro, as well as some flirting between Matt and Allura, which Lance doesn't really take kindly to. Back with the Galra Empire, Zarkon has returned to his throne. Zarkon removes Lotor from the Galra Empire completely, which at first seems up to upset Lotor, but in all actuality, falls in line with his plans very nicely. Zarkon and his forces discover Lotor's plans and wage an attack. Pidge reveals that she's been working on a way to cloak Voltron, but requires a co-pilot in order to do so, then invites her brother to do just that. If you guys recall, for those of you old school fans, in the original series, Pidge's brother was actually one of the pilots of Vehicle Voltron. This could be a nice little easter egg and possibly lead into Vehicle Voltron in the future. Zarkon proclaims Lotor and his soldiers enemies of the state and to kill on sight. Which is a nice little twist to the way their relationship was always depicted in the original series. Lotor and Zarkon always had a father-son rivalry, but Zarkon never quite made him an enemy, but actually took pleasure in mocking him and belittling him. This could make for a nice storyline. In episode 4, we get an episode which very much feels like the scene from Captain America the First Avenger, where the Paladins have to put on a performance in order to draw more planets into their resistance. In many instances, the Paladins are forced to act out of character and embarrass themselves in order to draw more people to their cause. Am I the only one who felt that the fourth episode was making fun of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, with all the references to striking a pose after each attack and shouting your lines, as well as getting rid of all the paladins except for Shiro, because he was the fan favorite, which was obviously a reference to Jason David Frank's Tommy Oliver. Then we get a reference to Star Wars when Koran says, Help me, beep bo beep, you're my only hope. Lotor's generals turn on him after the attack with Zarkon's army and shoot him with plans on turning him over in exchange for mercy. But knowing Lotor, he manages to escape. Keith takes another step closer to his destiny as leader of the Voltron Force when he takes command of the Voltron Coalition fleet in order to save his teammates and Voltron. Keith chooses to sacrifice himself for the good of the Resistance in Episode 5, but ends up getting help from an unlikely source. Who is that unlikely source? Well, who has a common enemy with the Voltron Coalition? That's right guys, Lotor. The season ends with Lotor announcing to the Rebels that I know we've had our differences in the past, but I think it's time we had a discussion. Which again is very reminiscent of the final season of Defender of the Universe when Lotor turned good briefly. I truly feel that as long as Shiro remains on the show, DreamWorks won't allow Keith to become leader of the Voltron Force. I kind of wish they would just go ahead and either kill off Shiro or send him away, because as long as he's around, Keith will always have that crutch to keep from becoming a leader. 
I'd say certain aspects of the season were strong, but as a season altogether, it was very weak in line with the others. Again, I hope in Season 5, DreamWorks gets rid of Shiro so that Keith can finally become the true leader of Voltron. I'll give Season 4 of Voltron Legendary Defender 3.5 stars. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys thought. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click on the little bell to receive notifications on all our upcoming videos. Hit the like button, make sure and leave us a comment so we know how you felt about this video. And don't forget to share with your family and friends. Until next time, I'm Shannon from Comagin, where all geek culture collides.